I know. Thought I'd um, do a video on a little job that I'm doing at the moment. As you can see, the old T20 is um, split in half for a little bit of work that he's doing inside. Um, not too major, I was out using it the other day, um, collecting some um, earth and everything, moving that around on the transport box on the back. And I noticed that we had a leak coming from the one of the drain holes in the bell I was in. And of course, it being um, transmission oil, I can only assume that the um, input shaft seal has failed, or beginning to fail. Um, it's worse, it's all right when it doesn't do it when it's running, but when it's not running, it begins to drift quite a lot. Um, so I split the tractor, relatively easy, first time in, well, God knows how long it's been apart. Um, <clears throat> it's a fairly straightforward job. As you see, I propped it up, the transmission up with a pair of axle stands and a block of wood. Tried to keep it more or less the same level, so it just slides in. The trolley that I had when I used to rebuild the stationary engines on, put that underneath the sump, so I can then wheel the front half of the tractor apart. Um, it's very, you know, I advise to, you know, take your time to chock it all up, because although it was a small tractor, it's still quite heavy. In the worst case, you don't want it landing on the floor or on your foot, you know. So just, you know, prop it all up. I did it on my own, but I've done them before, so you're not quite you know, sure on it. Get someone else to help you. Better be safe than sorry. Um, <clears throat> once I propped it all up, I then began to undo the bellows and bolts. I've got the ones here. Um, they came out fairly straightforward. But before I managed, one tip I did do before I put the trolley underneath is there's two bolts on the very bottom. And of course, once I put the, I put the trolley on the first time, I thought I can't get to them. So I had to take it all off. Took them two out, propped it all up, and then started undoing the bolts. And obviously the radius arms needed to come out. And so we do the trout rod ends and all the wiring. Just to, once to the starter, uh, the coil, temperature sender as well, air filter. I removed the throttle rod. I took the clamp off the end because um, I wasn't well, trying to take as minimal amount off as possible. But if you do it this way, as a clamp on the end for the throttle, mark the position of it. Otherwise, you know, get it back on the same way, otherwise it's gonna idle differently. Uh, this is one easy thing. Um, I gave it a quick clean up with some degreaser. And I cleaned it up, it wasn't too dirty to be honest. I was expecting it to be more grubby than that, but it was fairly clean. Everything else seems, you know, fairly good. The clutch does. Not too much wear on it really. Um, well, we never had any trouble with the clutch. The release bearing is, you know, nice and smooth as you can hear. Nothing grinding or anything like that. No wear, absolutely reasonably be good. So <clears throat> the next stage will be to start stripping down the release bearing. Uh, that will help take these shafts out, I should imagine. And in the back there, if I had a torch I'd show you, is a collar where the um, input shaft seal sits. So that's the next job, and I'll do another video on that for you. But this is more or less the first part of the input shaft seal replacement. So thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.